Welcome uh, yet to another session of our SG Midweek Devotion. We are taking a scripture from Psalms 146, verse 9. <clears throat> the Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and the widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. If you are not interested in caring for those in need, have no fear. God is on watch for them. Do not worry. The psalmist tells us that the Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the widow and the orphan. Though God would prefer that we join in the watch, even if we ignore the plight of those in need or turn from the suffering, God will not turn away or forget them. On the other hand, if you have no particular concern for the poor and cannot rouse yourself from your bed of ivory or comfortable couch to watch out for the marginalized and the weak amongst us for their sake, it might be worth paying attention to those in need if you maintain an inkling of care for yourself. For one thing, those in need in the instant of a flood, a death, a job loss, or loss of health care might be any one of us. But there is one other thing to keep in mind. God is on watch for all of us, and God's watch is for eternity. The words of scripture that calls on us to care for the stranger, the widow, and the orphan are the word of God and not reflective of a particular party or anything that is political or one to another. Psalms 146 reminds us, whatever our current choices, that the Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Here's a long view if you are considering ignoring God's commands to us. Sometimes it is true, God's word is difficult to translate and even more difficult to interpret. But there is something straightforward about the Samis' promises regarding God, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. That's God's word. But the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. As the prophet Amos' words to the people of Israel, a kingdom that will soon crumble under the weight of the Assyrian power, resonate across the ages and political divides down the Wall Street, the Silicon Valley and our living rooms suffused in the pleasures of a new age and new comforts, in inverted commas. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion and for those who feel secure. The question is, are we in alignment to God's prompting to share our riches with the needy or are we ignoring the call of God to each believer to be a blessing to others? What do these words and texts written thousands of years ago mean to us? Do we hear them as God's word to us? It is not just that these texts are challenging to understand. It is that they are challenging to live. Yet we perform our most profound interpretation of scripture in how we live. For how we live is what we believe. If we truly believe that the scripture is God's word for us, then the choices we make with respect to the poor and the marginalized implicate our lives forever. The word of God, in the word of God, we see Jesus tells us a parable in which the poor man Lazarus died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The nameless rich man, however, was in agony in these flames after he died. 
Images of hell abound in scripture, in medieval literature and in popular culture. But Jesus' parable shows to us the separation, the chasm between those comforted in the presence of God after death and those separated from the presence of God by selfish choices. If we truly believe that God is on watch for the poor, the widow, and the orphan, then now is the time to align ourselves with God's reign, with Lazarus, for the sake of the poor, now and, if nothing else, for our own sakes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. You brought us out of the slavery of sin with the blood of Jesus Christ, and you set us free to eternal life in him forever. Great is your name and most worthy of praise. We will praise you all our lives in word and song. Our trust, Lord, is in you. Oh God, for only you can save. You are our helper and our hope, and we are blessed because we trust in you. You are the maker of heaven and earth and everything in them, and you remain faithful forever. You do not abandon us in our time of need, but uphold us and provide for us, Lord, continuously. You set us free from the bondage of sin and oppression, and you give us strength when we are weak. Father, this week we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you that you watch over us without slumber. Your love is faithful. Your love is never ending. Your love is righteous who call on your name. You love the righteous, Father. You love the righteous for those who call your name, Father. They are righteous. You sustain us and watch over us. Great are your mercies towards us. You are King of kings and Lord of lords, and you reign forever through all generations. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God, forever. We love you and we praise you, our Lord and our Savior, our King. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, this week we pray that you will seek, you'll continue to seek God. You'll continue to seek him for his will and do his will. And we pray in this season of rebuilding that you and your family, your households will be blessed. God bless. God bless you.